Um, yeah, thanks so much for inviting me. Um, it's very inspiring to hear about this initiative, and I'm going to talk about that relationship between science and entrepreneurship, or the relationship between like academic institutions and social innovations, and um, and my own experience. Um, I work at the University of Oslo as a professor of human geography, and over the last 30 years, I've been really engaged in research on climate change and environmental issues, trying to understand the social and human dimensions from many different aspects. So I've been really um, you know, embedded in trying to figure out what are we doing in terms of the climate system and what can we do, how can we actually respond. And so through my um, work at universities and research institutes, I've had the opportunity to kind of you know, get out there and talk to people and within the um, structures of academic, for example, working on the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, working on the Future Earth Global Change Research Program, has really given me an opportunity to go out there and talk to people. But what I realized along the way is that we're kind of in a bubble within academia. I would always be talking to people who were just bobbing their heads and like already converted. And then I would go out there in the world and go like, wow, people don't even realize that the climate is changing. And this was like in the you know, 1990s and 2000s and things. And so that idea that, um, that we're not necessarily connecting with people, we're not necessarily having the impact that we could possibly have um, in society. So how do we connect with people? That became my project called Adaptation Connects, which is a top forsk or top research project funded by the Research Council of Norway and University of Oslo. And it stands for combining old and new knowledge to enable conscious transformations to sustainability. I kind of think that it's kind of like the old knowledge is the wisdom. What do we know from all those years? But also what are we, what's coming up and emerging? Some of the conditions that we are hypothesizing are really essential for transformations to sustainability are creativity, empowerment, collaboration, and flexibility. And so the research that we're doing um, is really looking at through um, Art Connects, the science art interface, um, Education Connects, you know, how do we empower young people and people with young minds to actually like shift systems and cultures. Um, coffee Connects is looking at the entire coffee value chain from the farmers in Burundi and Guatemala to the barista in Grunerlöcke. And Travel Connects is looking at narratives and how they change. So that's been like, I have a really great research group at the university and it's very exciting. Um, and another part of my job at the university is to teach young people about environment and society. So I just finished a textbook that really is trying to frame climate change as a social issue and emphasize the human dimensions and show that the solution space that we have is so much larger than the one that we're actually telling by you know, talking about it as an environmental problem. But still, you know, I meet great students, I have great researchers around me and everything, but still going back to that idea of how do we create impact, um, along the way, probably about 10 years ago, it became clear that research as usual is just not enough. You know, we want to answer these questions, how do we transform at the scope, scale, speed and depth that is actually called for by climate um, science? And how do we transform in an equitable, ethical and sustainable manner? And probably what drives me most is, you know, what is that relationship between personal change, collective change, and systems change? And to answer these questions, we cannot stay in our bubbles. We actually have to go out there and talk to different people and connect with people who do not see the world like us. So probably about in like 2011, um, Linda Cigna, um, who was a, um, a um, collaborator, a colleague of mine, we, we, we put in a proposal for a center of excellence. It got you know, did, got rejected. We tried again with the European Research Council, it got rejected. And we just decided we're gonna do this anyway. So we had, a, um, we had the launch meeting, the Transformations 2013 conference, which brought together 250 researchers. And then we decided we are gonna start Sea Change. And uh, as a company, not as a nonprofit, but you know, just as a company, we had no idea what we would actually do, but that idea that we have to do it anyway was really driving us. And so what we wanted to do is really be a beacon <coughs> for individuals and organizations that were looking for a new perspective on climate change. So how do we actually present the things that we're learning and that we're, you know, the insights from research and get them out of the institution? And our driving um, 
like um, motivation is a recognition that people are the solutions to environmental problems. It's not technologies, it's not you know, some you know, leader deciding that this is going to be the solution, but it's all of us people. And I think that that's when we get to this idea that we have, we're really underestimating our collective capacity for social change. And we're not using all our resources, as um, Christine has talked about. So how do we bring that out? Um, and you know, we were working with a, a framework that um, we developed within research um, with, um, that we call the three spheres of transformation. And these are really connecting the practical, the political and the personal dimensions of transformation and showing that our beliefs, our values, our worldviews, our paradigms, the mindsets that Karsten talked about are actually influencing how we engage with the systems and structures and social norms, rules, regulations, infrastructure to influence those practical behavioral and technical changes. So all of these are always interacting. So how do we actually motivate transformation to um, sustainability? What are those leverage points for entering that? So, so this is the framework that I use in my research and we've you know, spread it through the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change and through PhD projects and things. But what we're doing with Sea Change is really trying to bring this out and, uh, and get the public to really engage with not just the climate part of climate change, but the change part of climate change. Um, the first thing that we, when we started Sea Change and we had no idea what we were going to do, one thing that came up was that I was teaching um, students and who, about global environmental change and systems change, and they didn't get it until I said, like, why don't you make one small change in your life, and we'll just look at that as an object, and then start to explore the personal dimensions. We'll explore the role of social norms. We'll look at how structures and politics influences our capacity to actually change. And also your own personal reflections, your own immunity to change and things. So we would ask people to you know, eat, you know, pick up any kind of change, um, less meat in their diet, uh, bicycling, not using plastic, living on 50 kroner a day or reducing consumption or um, no plastic bottles or just spending an hour a day outside or meditating or anything. So these had such profound um, consequences in the student reflection papers that we said, we're going to take this out and do, every, you know, do it everywhere. And so the um, Environment Agency gave us money for a pilot project. And over the last years, we've been really developing it into this platform that we can use. And, and just not a platform, but how do we get, deliver a transformative program, kind of like the curriculum that we're teaching at the university, to a general public um, on that. And so we've been doing that with with schools, with mayors. We now have OBOS has 5,000 people taking it in September on the 30 days for the environment. So it's really a learning process. We're kind of going along and trying to, you know, figure out how can we actually engage people with change and let them have these aha moments and realize that, ah, I matter much more than I think. It's about not my carbon footprint. It's about my conversations. It's about the way I engage with, um, you know, my family, my friends, my colleagues, um, and, um, the political systems and everything. Another um, aspect that we've been developing um, over the last years is um, transformative leadership programs. And this goes back to the three spheres of transformation, which we developed with um, Dr. Monica Sharma, who heads leadership and capacity, she headed leadership and capacity um, development for the United Nations. And what we're trying to do here is really help everybody who's working on sustainability issues to really see that they are system shifters, they are cultural shifters, and that, that we can all have this much larger impact than we normally um, do. So, so this is something that um, we, we have some, um, you know, we're planning to do this next year in Bergen and, um, and, and really develop this not just for, you know, for people of all ages, but also for youth. So just to sum up, you know, to make those connections, like it's not just adapting to climate change, it's adapting to the very idea that we are changing systems and that we can change systems. So when I start to think about creativity, empowerment, collaboration, and flexibility, I realize that coming out of the university and starting Sea Change has really gotten me to, it's empowered me, it's let me be more creative, it's made me be more flexible or allowed me more flexibility than these traditional institutions do. And it's enabled collaborations that would not have been possible just within the university um, 
system and infrastructure. So while I still have two, one foot here and one foot here, and I haven't made that great leap just to being a social entrepreneur, I think that there's a balance to between you know, having that kind of input. And we really, you know, the PhD students and the master's students, they are really our biggest resource at Sea Change because they're just burning for making a difference in the world. And we want to just create jobs where people actually can show that they matter more than they think. So thank you very much. And I look forward to